All of you, you have an anointing. All of you know the truth. And this anointing abides in you. Is in, in you. All Christians, as my brother said, all Christians have the same anointing in them. We have the same anointing in us. The same spirits, the same who live in Christ is in us. The same who live in Christ live in us. The Bible says the same one who has resurrected Christ from the dead is living into us. Amen. The Bible truly said, this anointing abide permanently in you. Ephesians, please go to Ephesians. Ephesians said, and you also were included in Christ. You heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believe, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. All Christians, when you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit in you as a mark, as a seal. <coughs> so, the anointing in us, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit in every believer. Because it says that all of you, you have an anointing. He has talking about all Christians. You have an anointing. So, the presence, the anointing in us, who abides permanently in us, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit in every believer. Same anointing, same spirit, what the Bible is talking about. The presence of the Holy One, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. The anointing in us. The Bible says, if you go back again, it says, it abides permanently in you. It, this word, abide, abides permanently in you. That means permanently, you cannot lose it. If it abides permanently in you, you cannot lose it as a Christian. Though, you can lose it, this one, if you deny Christ as your Savior. This one you can lose it. But the Bible says permanently on a Christian, he abides in you. He is there, always there, in you. So the only time if you want to lose it is your decision. You say, I deny Christ is not my sin. Then he will go out from you. I can say that. So but the Bible says he abides in you. He abides in you. We feel in us. As the Bible says, this is the son of those who believe in my name. And then I'm going for joy first. The spirit, he said that they will prophesy, they will have vision, they will cast out demons. They, they, what is the sign again? They speak in other tongues. They eat the sick. This is the sign for those, for the believers. So the Holy Spirit in you can do everything. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, what is the purpose? Of the anointing in us who abides permanently in us. Okay, the purpose of the anointing in us, I'll be quick. First, testify and give assurance, give us assurance that we are Son of God. Romans 8:16, the Bible says, The Spirit Himself testify with our spirit that we are God children. The first one when He comes into your life, He changes your life, He makes you become a child of God. This is the first thing He will do in your life. It changed your identity. This is the, the one it, it does in our, in, our, in our life. The Holy Spirit, the anointing, the, 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 the only one in us. He said that the Spirit Himself testify with our spirit that we are children of God. First Peter 2 9, the Bible says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Now we become holy because of the holiness of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. God's special possession. That you may declare the praise of the of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. He said that now you are a chosen people because of the one who the one who lives in you. He said the Bible said you are a holy nation. So first thing, as the purpose of the anointing in our life, the praise of the Holy Spirit testify, give us assurance that we are Son of God. Amen. Secondly. Second, he guides us, leads us, 
speak to us, tell us. John 16, verse 13, the Bible says, When he, the spirit of truth, because when you remember when you go to first John, you say, You all know the truth. The Bible says, He is the spirit of truth. Comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will speak on, he will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So he guides you, he speaks to you, he tells you what's the Holy Spirit in you, the anointing of abides permanently in you, the spirit of truth will guide, speak, and tell you. He transforms us in the image of Jesus. Amen. He transforms our life when He speaks to you, when He guides you, when He tells you He wants to transform you to a better person. Amen. 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 Thirdly, I'll be quick. I told you. I don't have much time. He testifies about Jesus. He gives glory to Jesus. John 15, 26. When the Advocate comes, when whom I will send to you the Father, the Spirit, of truth again who goes out from the father he will testify about me he will testify about me he give glory to god so whatever you do you feel like when you do it is giving glory to god is making you what is making you give glory to god the anointing in you testify about god he speak about god he, he as the bible says he's testifying and showing the people that this is for the glory of God. Amen. Four. It teaches us and reminds us the anointing in us. The Bible says in John 15, 14, 26 again. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. It will teach you and remind you everything I have said to you. If the Spirit will teach and remind. Let's go back to 3 John 2, 27. The first scripture. Go again. Again. First, the, I think it is. Yeah. He said that, but as you, as for you, the anointing, the second appointment, the unction which you have received from him and passed permanently in you, then you have no need that in what should instruct you. But as his anointing teach you concerning everything, and it is true, he does not lie, you must abide in him. He said that he will teach you, instruct you, you don't need to anyone to teach you. You know that Paul, the Apostle Paul, no one taught him about the, uh, Christianity. No one. The Bible says when he meets uh, uh, um, Jesus, he become blind, and the guy, it was Ananias, right? When Ananias came, he speak to him, and then the Bible say he, he, he did three years before encountering one of the first disciples. Three years he went being baptized. We don't know where he went. You can go into the scripture, you can learn. The Bible said no one instructed him for three years. He didn't go to see an, an apostle, oh, Apostle John, he's teaching me how do you do it. No. He said that after three years, they admit John, the apostle, and Peter. After three years. So the anointing himself will instruct you, will teach you. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. He instructs us and teaches us. Hallelujah. So, the anointing in us, as I was saying, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit in every Christian, every believer. Because you are, you believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit abides in you permanently. And it's more works, this anointing is more works for our growth. It's more works for our salvation. Amen. It's work for our salvation, our growth, to bear fruits. This is the purpose of this anointing in us. Hallelujah. Secondly, let's go to the second. The anointing on us. Now I'm going to specify this one. The anointing in us. <clears throat> Look for one. The Bible say, Jesus, full of the Spirit, full it is inside. To be full, you must come from the inside. Full of the Spirit, 
left Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the darkness. Now the main scripture, we start from 14, is a little bit long, I'll read it quickly. 14 to 21, Jesus returned to Galilee, covered in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you read in French, it's more clear to understand. Jesus a été revêtu de puissance. It's how the Bible saying. Revêtu de puissance, that means covered. They give you a coat. They give you a coat of power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus returned to Galilee, covered in the power of the Holy Spirit. After the fall, he was covered. And knew and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in the synagogue and everyone praising him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. On, and on the Sabbath day, he went in the synagogue and as was his custom, he stood up to read. He stood up to read. Okay, let's go. Next one? Yeah. He stood up to read and scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him and wrote it. He found the place where it's written, 18, the spirit of the Lord is on me. Okay? Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom from the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind, to set the oppression free, to, pro to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he wrote up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying them, to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That means this scripture was not fulfilled when, as I was spoken, it was not fulfilled. He said, now it's fulfilled. He was speaking about me. What? The spirit of the Lord is now on me. When you read, go, when you go back on first one, you say the spirit, the, the, the Holy Spirit, if it was full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, but now you see, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Let us make a difference between in and on. Okay? The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. You know, uh, in the first verse, as I said, Jesus was full of the Spirit. In verse 18, he said, the Spirit is on me, not in me. Jesus never spoke about in me. In me was when he was there in first one, he said he was full of the Spirit of God. But now he said, now it's fulfilled. What I'm saying now is fulfilled that the Spirit is on me, not in me, but he was he was in him. But now is now on me. The Spirit is on me. The anointing. I mean the Spirit on you. Oh, the anointing on you. It is anointing of your call. It is the anointing of your service. If you are not what you have been called for, I don't know if you understand. This anointing on you, it is the anointing of your call, of your service, what you have been called for, what God has prepared you to do, your mission on earth. He said that the anointing on, on is on me. What you have been called for. If you have been called sure about the doctors, no. The Bible say, the Bible say, uh, uh, to some as, to some as, that means to some as doctors, to some as engineers. Amen. 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 So that power is that, you know that, are you there? That means you must have you must first be anointed in you and then on you. Amen. You must have your cloth and then put a cover. Amen. Amen. Reason why I'm saying and uh, you must first be anointed before being anointed. Hallelujah. <laughs> the anointing in you, Jesus was full of the spirits, and then the Bible said, He said himself, now it's fulfilled that the cover is on me. Hallelujah. So, you must have the Spirit in you and then on you. 
Hallelujah. Because now is the New Testament. Okay? Believers should have first in them and then on that the power, the difference. Hallelujah. Let me also tell you something that I'm learning this day. Uh, uh, most of the time, I'm saying, most of the time, the quantity of the feeling of the Holy Spirit in you can also determine the level of your anointing on you. Amen. The quantity of your feeling can also determine the level, the empowerment of your on you, of the Spirit on you. Jesus what has the spirit without measure. Okay? That means his anointing on him was without measure. Are you there? So most of the time it works like this. The feeling on you when it's so great, so powerful, so so high, your empowerment, when you ask the spirit on you, you see, that is different. Hallelujah. So it's different from the anointing in you. Comprise the anointing in you, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the anointing on you. It is the anointing for your call. The power of the Holy Spirit that overshadow you to do the work of God. Amen. 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 So now let me tell you. Uh, this anointing is not in the same level on you. It's not in the same level. Why I'm saying that? Uh, Elisha asked another level of anointing of Elijah. He asked the double portion of the anointing on. And at that time there is not in her. It was only on. He asked the double portion of the anointing of Elijah. That means the Lord of his ear is different. He said, God, I want, I want the, another level, a great level of this anointing. Here is also the level. Uh, symbolism symbolized as oil. This is for God. Oil. Okay. Uh, the oil that you put in the engine of a car is not the same you put on the brake. The oil you put on a car is not the same with the airplane. Eh? It's not the same. Different call, different anointing. According to your call, to some as prophet, to some as engineer, as doctor, as preacher. To send to other as priest, as priest, as singer. It's not the same oil that you use. It's different. Leviticus 8, 12. Is this one? No, okay. Oh, this one is for you. Okay, thank you. Leviticus yeah, this one. Leviticus is 8, 12. He put some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. I was wondering, God, what just can you tell Moses? Moses, go to see Aaron, tell him that now he's a priest. God could just say that. Tell him he's a priest. No need of anointing him or consecrating him. Because it's all it's already a member of my 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 my, my people. It's what Israel people. He could say, it just bring him. Why consecration? I was asking. Because all we are all here, we are children of God. We have the Spirit of God in us. But why consecration? As I said, consecration now, anointing is because of your call. This anointing on you. Because God has called you to do this. It doesn't mean because you are God's son, you are a children of God, you don't need anointing on you. The only need is about yourself, it's about your call. So, every Christian, you don't have to say that because I'm anointed in me, I don't need the only me. No, you need it because of your call. First of all, maybe you have to discover first your call. So, uh, it's not because, it's not because David was anointed as a king, then he can, he can go to the Holy of Holy as a priest. Are you there? David was anointed as king. This anointing does not make him, does not allow him to go to the Holy of Holy like a priest. Okay? He was anointing with oil also. 
But this oil does not make him to go to the holy of holy. Amen. Though also, the priest Aaron, he was anointed as a priest, but this oil does not make him to rule as David or to take the to rule as Moses. He was anointed according to his call. Respect the oil. It's about respecting the oil, different anointing. It's not because you are called to be uh, 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 to, to be like uh, like Aaron, a priest, then is allowing you to rule over Israel. It's not like this. Different anointing, different call. You can be anointed to sing. No, you can be, you must be. I can even say you must be because this one is your call. Because the church does not seek for beautiful voices. We are seeking for those who are anointed to sing. Amen. We're seeing for those who are anointed to sing because when it's your call, when you sing, there's di this different, it's different, you change the atmosphere. You know that song we are singing here in the praise of God. You know the song, right? We are singing. You know that song, the first time I heard it was six years ago. And I feel the anointing. I was hearing this, we have been praying with my friends and we have been made, made, we have been listening many songs. But the time we listening that song, Oh my God, I never felt that feeling before. I feel something on me. I feel the anointing coming from that song. Even though when I'm listening to that song, I cannot see, but this guy does not know how to sing. He doesn't have a good voice. Really, that guy, he doesn't have a good voice. But whenever he sings, you feel like that, this guy is releasing something because of the anointing, because of the ears call, the anointing on him. Amen. Next, we are a body of Christ, many members, but not the same functionality. The function of your nose is not the function of your leg. I don't know if you can move in your leg. Okay? God will announce you according to your call, your function. By the way, the lotion you put on your head, do you put it in your body? You put it. Hey. I didn't know. Bring it to me too. I don't want to waste my money. The, the oil you put on your head is for your head. Because of what it vitalizes your head. It was made for it. It's not the same. It's not the same you put on your body. When you put it on your body, it's different. You can't know what to happen. Different lotion, different function. Different anointing, different call. Different function, different anointing. Are you there? You know, I can also see that Peter, he was an apostle, but he had a different anointing with John. Because of what? Peter, the, the day he spoke, 3,000 people believed in him, believed in Jesus Christ. Can you see the difference? 3,000, when he finished to speak, 3,000 give the life to Christ. Can you believe? If, that, if it's not the anointing, what is it? Witchcraft. <laughs> but that day I'm sure that it was the anointing of God. Amen. It was the anointing of God. And John, you can also see that John has a prophetic anointing. He was more like a vision. Even the last book, it was John who wrote it. You see that? You can see the difference. Even uh, in Peter, we can see he was um, anointed for Jew and poured for Gentiles. You see? Peter, the Bible said that Peter was more for Jew. This is what is called a different one. When he speak to Jews, the Jews change and give their life to Christ. But when Paul speak to Gentiles, to pagans, they, ch they change us. Different anointing, different function. Now Paul and Silas, same call, same from Gentiles. But you can also see, this is my saying, they didn't have the same anointing on them. Paul and Silas, we can also see, I'm saying that Paul has a great impact. Great impact, not same level of and with Silas. 
Next one. Now, I'll be quick because of time. Take it quick. Uh, how to maintain the anointing. This is the main message. I mean, the main message is called how to maintain the anointing. That's the quick. You can't maintain what you don't have. Eh? You can't maintain what you don't have. First, you must have it and maintain it. Then, let us go. Luke 11, 11, 13. Which of your fathers is, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for a head, he will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit on those who ask Him? Now, you can't ask for what you already have. Let me see first this one. <coughs> I cannot bother to help me understand this one. You can't ask for what you already have. Okay? You can't ask for a phone. I have a phone. Okay? I have a phone. Maybe in another version. Right? Yeah. But we have the same spirit. It does not change. So, I cannot ask the Holy Spirit because I have the Holy Spirit. I'm a Christian. That means it's living permanently in me. So I was like, Jesus, what are you saying? I have the spirit on me. What should I ask? And I had this voice. The Holy Spirit is not on every Christian, but is in every Christian. Amen. Jesus said, Ask. Ask the Holy Spirit now, if you don't have it. The Holy Spirit is not on every Christian, but is in every Christian. Then ask. This one, ask. Ask. So when you receive the anointing on you, the power that comes from, from above, <laughs> maintain it. So how to maintain it? Go. First one. Sanctification life. Leviticus 8, 3, 6. The Bible says, Then Moses brought Aaron and his son for word and washed them with water. This is the verse before 12. On 12, he anointed them. On 6, he washed them. That means sanctification works, I mean, anointing works with sanctification. If you want to maintain the anointing on you, even more on you, even also in you, but I'm talking about on you, if you want to maintain it, live in sanctification. A sanctification. Be sanctified. The Bible says he washed them with water. Glory be to God. We are not washed by water anymore. We are washed by the blood of Jesus and the word of God. Amen. Amen. So sanctification is good to maintain your anointing. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1. The Bible says, as death flies, makes the oil of the perfume give off a full, a bad odor. Okay? So a little foolishness. Outweigh wisdom and honor. So they say that dead flies, the mouche, okay, so the mouche don't pas. Dead flies make the oil of the prophet give off a full odor, a bad smelling. Here, dead flies, it's means of sin. When there is sin, it makes your sanctification <laughs> bad, looking bad, looking like it's not this one, it's not the truth. Even though it's oil, can you see oil mixed with dead flies inside? How it looks like, you see? No, it's oil, but no. You see, that's the, the work of sin. You are anointed, but when you keep on seeing dead flies in you, it makes full bad smelling. Bad smelling. Instead of attracting people, people now are running away from you. If there is that fly, dead flies, Anointing is like is oil. Okay, as I say that is mainly okay. It's also simple as that oil. We know oil is not like water. When water wants to evaporate, right? It's go quickly if there's sun. Okay, but oil is not so quick. It can take time. 
water can evaporate for 10 minutes, but the oil, maybe one day, maybe one day. Saul lost his anointing because of disobedience, the king. But two Saul in the power. The first one lost his anointing. I mean, he met God. Yeah, he met God and then he disobeyed to God. He became a, a, a bad person, a worse person. He, he has lost his anointing. The second soul met God, obeyed to God, he became poor and kept his anointing because of obedience. The first one obeyed to what God has commanded him. See, that's change. See, you must change. He obeyed. He went and his life has changed. He became poor. He kept his anointing. He go on and go on. But the first one, because of disobedience, he has lost his anointing. Thirdly, keep on asking for anointing. The man, the man scripture it was this one. I'll always be clothed in white. White here is also a symbol of sanctification, holiness. Always, always be white. Always ask for some be in sanctification. And then he say, always anoint your head with oil. Always anoint your head with oil. So he said that always anoint your head with oil to be sure that it will, it will never lack. Anoint your head with oil. To be sure that this, sorry, this oil will never lack. Always anoint it with oil. So, if you, you want to be sure that this anointing can never lack, you must ask for it. If you, you want to be sure that my phone will never be discharged, you must charge it. Always charge your phone. Always charge your phone. It's the same. To be sure that oh, I will not run out, run out of battery. What do you do? You charge your phone. You charge your phone. It's the same. Always ask for the anointing God. Anoint me on me, on me. Always on me, God. I want the anointing. I want to set you more and more in a greater level. Always ask for anointing. As we also say, anointing is like a cult. It's like a cult in you. The more you grow, the more you change cloth. Isn't it? The more you grow, the more you change cloth. So when you grow spiritually, you go, you understand many things. You must also ask for another thing that come from God because of your level. It's the same with people. The more you grow, the more you change cloth. Can you just imagine you are 20 years old, you are wearing a coat of 12 years old. How strange you look like. You see? So always ask for anointing. Always ask for anointing. It will revive yourself and to walk according to the generation, according to your time of your call. Oh, being in communion with the, the one who gives you the anointing. Walk in power without being in communion with the Holy Spirit will make you lose the anointing. Samson, this is a Samson. You know Samson, right? You don't know him? No, I'll ask him to finish. was looking at me all this. Samson was not big. He was like, uh, oh, where's Amon? Amon is not there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Samson was not so big, laughing back. So Samson is the guy who has been anointed, but when you read the story of Samson, he was not the guy who was praying too much, was intimate with Christ, the Holy Spirit too much. He was not such kind of guy. You see him going to this prostitute, and then he found himself down. <laughs> He envy the throne, the anointing, the power of theirs, the learning also. It was not correct. Do not envy when you are anointed. Be focused on your core. Six. Yeah. Being focused on your core. You know that you are called to be uh, you are called to be a singer. You know that this is your core. But you want to play piano. You see how big it will be. So, though you be talented, but the, the empowerment that you release is not the same as you sing. I don't know if you understand. You can be talented to play, but the one who plays even not more than go, when he plays, people are just changing. They're changing the atmosphere. But you, your call is to sing. You know that when I'm singing, 
It's very powerful. So be focused on your call. Focus on your call. Focus on your anointing. Then you become more and more successful. I mean, you maintain your anointing. When you focus on your call, you maintain your anointing. Keep on serving God. Being away from distraction. Amen. We work most of the time. There are girls who are anointed distraction. Being away from distraction. Keep on serving God. Keep on serving God. Be away from distraction. This is the example of David. The king. King David. The one who wrote Psalm. Okay? This guy was anointed. But instead of being instead of writing the psalm, he said, let me relax. And then he was relaxing like this. Nothing to do and and he's in. You know the story? Yes. Because he didn't have something to do, he has seen. Because he was relaxing. Don't relax too much. Don't relax too much. <laughs> what I meant here is, when you know your call, your anointed one, be away from distraction. Be away from relaxing too much. Okay? The Bible says we just in the Lord. You can relax in the Lord. Amen. But I'm talking about relaxing too, too much. And you don't have something to do. Always find something to do. If you are anointed one, God son, you're working in ministry, doing something for God, find something to do. Okay? If you don't have something to do, sleep. <laughs> and need to have sleep, oh. If I don't have something to do, I sleep. Yes, you sleep. If you don't have you sleep. Or you, you just study. It's okay. But find something to do. David, very, very humble. You are the servant. <coughs> it, it's not because you are anointed, it makes you become the chief. You should be the servant. <coughs> Amen. Nine, stay away from ex anointed. Stay away from them. You know that this guy is an ex anointed? Stay away. Hmm? Ex anointed? Oh, I'm coming now. Okay, ex anointed. Uh, it's on you, okay? It's not in you. Ex anointed is the one you know that he was working with God in power, in power, in power, and then he has stepped back. Okay? Yeah, he has stepped back. He's, the no, he's not the only one who was asking, let's go to pray. He's the one who asked me, let's go to play football. He was the guy who asked me, let's go and play, I mean, to pray for two hours. Now he's the guy who asked me, let's go to chill. That's our ex-anointed. David, this is simple, not David, the son, Jonathan. Jonathan knew that his father was an ex anointed. Saul was ex anointed. Jonathan knew that. And then he knew also that David was not the one anointed, anointed one. What Jonathan did? He followed his father. And then he died with his father, knowing that he was not the one anointed. It was David. Because he was so close of his father. And he, he, he died there. He, he, he killed himself at him say. Don't be a fan of people. He, Jonathan was also a fan of his father. This is salvation. He, this is not my father, not about the, the, the I don't know the, the this is about my own life. And I have to follow those who are anointed to stay close to them. So stay away from the ex anointed That will bring you down. Be disciplined and respect your call. For anointed people, discipline like Jesus. Jesus was disciplined. Prayer, sleeping, eating, doing miracle. He was a normal person, but disciplined. He has an habit of praying. He has an habit of going seeing people he has an habit he was disciplined and respect your call respect that god has given you a call you have to respect it is a responsibility 
you must respect this one. It's a grace of God. Even the anointing is a grace. Everything we have is the, by the grace of God. Respect the anointing on you. Do not be like Samson. This guy, I, I don't know this. I've never seen another person like Samson. In the world.